Thank you, Rita, for that beautiful piece welcoming us to worship on this Holy Thursday, Monday Thursday, when we remember our Lord's Last Supper in instituting the Holy Communion, which we are invited to participate in today. Let's rise for our opening hymn, Lamb of God.
take a moment to say hello to your neighbor if you didn't already have a chance to do so. Special welcome to our guests and visitors. Glad you could join us. We also welcome those streaming online, wherever you are. Glad you could join us and those dialing in to our worship today. The psalm for today, I'll read the bold print if you'll read the light print. Or no, you read the bold, I'll read the light. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my hand. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. So reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The earliest uh, scripture written recording the words of institution the Lord gave at the Last Supper are from 1 Corinthians, where St. Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, this is for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The gospel today from John 13, and if you'll read this along with me today. Now before the festival of the Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing. But later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet. It is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? 
You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. That's the gospel of our Lord. Let's, uh, let's sing this Taizé chorus. Some of you know it. It goes like this. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Yes, this is a holy day when we remember our Lord's last supper, the Passover where he takes the unleavened bread, as we did the other night at the Seder meal right here at Shatek Lutheran, and he broke it, and then he gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then he took the cup of wine, part of the Passover uh, celebration, and said, drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. And as often as you drink this and eat the bread, you proclaim my death until I come again. That's what we do today. Proclaim the Lord's death, the crucified Lord, by gathering together and sharing in this holy supper. It's a witness. We're not only here to worship and to thank and praise God, but our coming together is a witness to the world of who Jesus is and what he did for us. Of course, John is the only gospel writer to record this, this foot washing event where Jesus, after the supper, gets down and starts to wash the disciples. Can you imagine the shock of these disciples who for years have been honoring their master, Jesus the Lord, the rabbi, and they're thinking, wait a minute, this is the wrong picture. We should be washing your feet. But of course, Jesus, the master teacher, um, Dr. Rich Melheim would love this because it's hands-on teaching, right? <laughs> that's the best teaching. You remember it when you use your hands, your feet, your body. And that's what he was doing. One of his last acts on this earth. Not only to teach with his mouth and words, but with this action. He says, just as I've done to you, you should do for one another. He wasn't just talking about washing feet, was he? He's talking about serving other people. The word diakonos in the, in the New Testament, in the Greek, simply means one who serves others. It's a word for minister. So who are the ministers here today? All of us. We're all called to serve in the spirit of Jesus. Whether it's washing feet feeding the poor, going out and comforting the grieving. The list goes on how we can serve others out of love. Jesus said, I've given you an example. We need examples, don't we? From early on, we look to people who can become examples for how to live the good life. If we don't have them, we end up in the bad life. We know that. Think of the many kids without father or mother figures. Who are their examples? Well, maybe some of us step in there. And we all have examples. Of course, Jesus is the penultimate. You can't beat Jesus if we want an example to follow. But there are others, too, like one of my favorites, Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Rita, you'd love him. He was a Bach musician. He was a philosopher. He was a pastor. 
took a medical uh, uh, course and became a doctor in medicine. He had four doctorate degrees by the age of 30. How many of you have done that? <laughs> I couldn't get close to one. But he had four. At the age of 30, living in Europe, he could have commanded a salary like no other. Uh, he could have lived the high life. But guess what he did? He heard the cries of the people in Africa who didn't have medicine, who didn't have food, probably didn't have the proper education. And that's where he went and spent most of his life as a medical missionary to people that were poor, that were sick and dying. He coined the phrase reverence for life. It earned him the Nobel Peace Prize in 1952, underscoring that every form of life from the smallest and meanest to the biggest and greatest deserves reverence from us because God, the reverent creator, created all life as a gift to us. And he also said, the main thing in life is to be an example. He must have been listening to Jesus. <laughs> the main thing in life is to be an example. As someone has said, some... For some people, you might be the only Bible they read. We're talking about your life witness. Why, does she, why is she so kind to me? Why does she bring me that bread? You know, why does she bring me the hot day? Well, you've heard the expression, kill them with kindness. <laughs> we don't want to kill them. We want them to bring them to life just as the Lord does for us. Yesterday, Renee and I had the privilege of seeing the film Mother Cabrini. Anybody seen that yet? Yeah. Talk about inspiring. One little woman from Italy who came to New York City when Italians were frowned upon. They were like invading immigrants, prejudiced, beat, some even killed. And they didn't get the attention they deserved coming to America, the land of immigrants. But this little nun went to the Pope, the mayor of New York City, the editor of New York Times, wherever she could get some kind of help to start an orphanage for a number of the children that were orphaned. She was persistent, as could be. And finally, her persistence and prayers paid off where the orphanage was started and several hospitals from New York City, throughout our country, throughout the world. She became the first, I believe, American canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. And she quoted Jesus, as you do it to the poor, the homeless, the naked, the imprisoned, Jesus says, so you've done it to me. We don't have to look too far to see how we can serve Jesus, do we, in our neighborhoods? in our communities. How many remember the name Bob Dylan? <laughs> Some of you do. You gotta serve somebody. You might be an ambassador to England or France. You might like to gamble, you might like to dance. You might be the heavyweight champion of the world. You might be a high socialite with a long string of pearls. But Art, you gotta serve somebody. Yeah, you got to serve somebody. It might be the devil. It might be the Lord. But you got to serve somebody. And today, by God's grace, we're called to bless and serve the Lord by serving one another, by being ministers in the best sense of the word, by reaching out with love and compassion in the spirit of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing a song called Just As I Am. <laughs>
Let's join together on this Holy Thursday, confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by God and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he is up to the death. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come and judge us the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us join together now in prayer for God's people, the church, all people according to their needs. Lord God, we do rejoice today in the gift of our salvation, a free gift from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who endured suffering and shame and death on the cross for us and the world, and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers so that we can live every day not fearing death in the grave, but holding to the hope of everlasting life, and one day being rejoined with loved ones that have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, we gather today and confess before you and one another that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We've not always loved you with our whole heart and neighbors as ourselves. And thank you that by the death of Jesus, you forgive us our sins and grant us peace and everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless Shatek and Dover churches and your church throughout the world today, especially where there's conflict and schism, persecution and oppression. We pray for all people affected by these things, and we pray for the poor and the hungry, the downtrodden, those who are prejudiced against, we pray for all those that are living with war and violence and strife and speed the day when there is peace for all in the world. We pray for the sick, the dying and the grieving. We pray for the homeless and the refugees. We pray for those facing addictions and going through separations. We remember those who are depressed and struggle day by day to see the light and that you would use us, O oh Lord, to be instruments of your healing and light. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the peacemakers here and throughout the world today who stand in harm's way for the sake of peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we prepare for the gift of the Holy Communion, we thank you that you call us to be part of the Holy Catholic, the Holy Christian Church that we're united with brothers and sisters around the world. We think especially of our partner church in Malawi and continue to bless them with your bounty, with your peace and provisions they need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, be with those that we know to be ill and hospitalized today, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We pray for our brother, John Kirshner, who's been hospitalized. Be with Carolyn Cizik. Continue to be with Lynn Trowbridge and Gabe Venezuela. Others we name before you for your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy. As we gather for the Holy Communion today, we remember tonight a number of our young people who will be having their first communion. We ask your blessing upon them their families, and all those around the globe who are taking communion in your name. Amen. The offering today, if you brought, you could put in the plate in the back. There's an offering plate. But let's rise and join the offertory hymn, Rita.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves and our time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And God with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Right and thanks to give thanks to the Lord. It is indeed right and salutary that we should all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. But chiefly today we're bound to praise you for his sacrificial love by giving his life for us in the world. And so we remember that Holy Thursday, the night in which he was betrayed, when our Lord took the bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. Gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And our Lord taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table today where you can come up and kneel or stand receive the elements of the communion. There's gluten-free wafers in the bread tray. There's apple juice in the center of the wine tray. When you're done with your cup, you could put in the baskets on either side of the altar. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We thank you, Almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to strengthen us and to forgive us, to heal us, and keep us in your grace, and at the last bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sign with me. I'm a child of God. I'm loved by God, and I'm not alone. Yes, you notice the, uh, the banners up on the altar are from our First Communion uh, students who will be having their First Communion tonight. Uh, they were listed on the, uh, the uh, board in a minute ago. Uh, and Katie Bernard, our youth and family minister, did a nice teaching. Uh, Palm Sunday evening, we had a Seder meal, not just with the kids and their families, but several other adults who came and uh, once again relived that Last Supper Jesus had by going through the Passover and how Jesus became the perfect lamb, which was called for on the Passover. He became the perfect lamb for the sins of the world. Well, this is the beginning of the weekend of Holy Week. It started with Palm Sunday. Um, tonight we have a service at 7, as I mentioned. Tomorrow, Good Friday, uh, we gather at 3 o'clock here at Chatech Lutheran. Some say that's the hour Jesus died, 3 o'clock, uh, although in Israel it will be, what, 10 or 11 at night, but here it will be 3 o'clock. And then uh, 7 o'clock we gather at the United Methodist Church where a number of the local ministers are going to do dramatizations of characters at the cross. It should be a should be a moving experience. And then Easter morning, we gather at 7.30 and 9 o'clock at Chatech Lutheran with breakfast at 7 to 9. And then at Dover Lutheran Church, 10.30 worship and breakfast will be served there at 9.15. Um, Sandy, do you want to say anything about these loony Lutherans? I mean, I see the... Go ahead, you could shout from there. Okay. Uh, April 11th, uh, ladies are invited to get together. We'll carpool from the uh, parking lot here. Uh, we'll see the Looney Lutherans at Ivy Center in Chippewa Falls. We'll have lunch out first and we'll, they'll play at 1 o'clock. It's $17 to us seniors. Uh, it's hot fish on the range. Very good. So for those dialing in or watching, April 11th, there's a women's group going to see the Looney Lutherans. So let us know if you're interested. Any other announcements by anybody? If not, we're going to have our closing hymn. And let's rise as we're able. Thanks to Karen for doing the live stream.
Thank you.